Welcome everybody to another edition of Behind the Scenes Live. That is BTS Live for short, episode number 16. And uh, I can't believe it's 16. I want to welcome my partner in crime here, Mark Rogers. Mark, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Marty. We're kind of at that time of year where spring is teasing us and it was really nice this weekend. I think we've got some snow coming up here soon, but uh, good things in store. Exactly. It's it's funny you mentioned the snow. We're heading into March, starting tomorrow, and that seems to always be the case up here in the Northeast with snow late in the season. It's sort of like a tease. The only good thing about it is the sun is a lot stronger this time of year, so it normally doesn't stick around, doesn't stay frozen. So I think we're out of that part of it. And the and the, frankly, the winter's been really tolerable. I mean, it's it's. A couple of cold nights, it hasn't lasted that long. So I'll take winter like this all the time. So anyways, so let me get into a little bit of the saga. <laughs> and we'll, I call this my therapy session a little bit, but let me get into a little bit of the saga here and explain a couple things to you guys. So we're streaming, as, we, as you know, we are streaming live on um, blab.im. And I'm just getting used to my setup here. So... I'm going to show you that page now. So we're you're streaming on this page here, uh, btslive.com. We set up a landing page, and we're streaming here. I've I've daily motion embedded, and if you click that and you want to watch in HD, you can certainly do that. Uh, if you do and you want to stay in Blab for the comments, uh, you probably want to mute the Blab tab and and watch in HD. So that's available to you there. Um, the other thing I want to uh, make everyone aware of is our Facebook group uh, behind the scenes live if you go on Facebook and search behind the scenes live everybody is welcome to join the group if you haven't already a uh, lot of great conversation and you know hats off to Barb Tomlin who actually started the group probably I think just early on like week one or week two or I mean she saw the potential in both of us I guess and she jumped right on it and she's been a tremendous help in this and She's one of the administrators along with Mark and myself. And I have to tell you, I, it has surpassed my expectations, this group. It's been a source of great conversation, uh, especially in the video area where things are changing and evolving so quickly. And just a great group in there. We have 101 members as of today. And I'm just floored at the response and at the community, you know, everyone in there and just a great group of people. And it's a lot of fun. I, I go in there, you know, I, you know, I get up in the morning. That's like the first thing I check is the group and see what's going on. So uh, it's been great. I, I really have enjoyed uh, being part of that. So let me give you a couple of rundown as far as what's happening here and where we stand with this show technically. All right. So as you guys know, we simulcast to Blab as we're doing now. Now you may notice on Blab, I'm looking onto the side because my computer is off to the side. I had to make a quick change last minute and our video is squished vertically a little bit and there's really not much I can do about that right now I don't have Wirecast installed on that machine and that's what I use to format the video so something had to, something had to be the sacrifice and Blab is the sacrifice this week uh, and also we stream out to five different CDNs uh, Daily Motion, YouTube Live, Stream Up, Stream.me and I am missing one other, whoa, uh, Ustream, of course. So we stream out there, and uh, it is actually being recorded on YouTube Live as a backup. And that's kind of a preview of what I'm going to talk about a little bit. Um, and with Mark, we are bringing Mark in via Skype this time. And frankly, I think this is going to be the best solution going forward. This is something we probably should have done a while back. But due to other circumstances and try different things. We've tried Hangouts. We've tried Blab, bringing Blab back in, which is can be a nightmare because I'm kind of looping the audio back through. We tried a peer. Or we tried a peer. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, Mark, because 
I discovered today, and those of you who have been following the show know my audio issues, my audio challenges with this show. In fact, on Blab, the audio is not exactly where I want it because I'm going through my capture card, which is not the best audio, but so be it. On the HD feed, it should be really good. Um, so all these services should work. Appear worked great in rehearsal. You know, Mark, you were able to get right in, no problem. Normally, Hangouts works pretty good. Um, Blab worked okay. It's just complicated with the setup. But up here, we thought that would be the way to go, you know. But then I tested it last minute. And this was, I believe, last week. Well, the two weeks ago, I was going to use up here, I think. No, but last week, I was going to use up here. Sorry. And last minute, I tested the audio, and I got this high-pitched audio. So anybody coming in from up here, I go, what is going on? So then I tested with Skype. I was getting the same high pitch audio. Come to find out, I'm using an iMac, 2009 iMac, an older iMac, off to the side here, which I'm looking at right now, to bring in Mark. Or that was the plan, at least. And apparently something is up with the iMac where, and it might be an audio encoding issue. I'm, that's what I'm guessing, that it's not matching up. So audio is encoded like 44.1 thousand kilohertz per sec, you know, samples per second, and you have 48 thousand, all kinds of weird. And don't they don't match up? Then you have issues, and that's my my thinking that it's not matching up. So I had to make a switch, and I'm using my MacBook Pro to bring Mark in, and normally I'm using that to bring up to go out to Blab with Wirecast. Now I don't have Wirecast installed on my iMac, so that explains the squished video. But, in theory, the HD feed and the recording should be pretty good. So that's the rundown, Mark. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to well, I think I'm going to toss it to you to go through you know your part of, of uh, what you uh, what you were going to cover, kind of the, your your journey with Mark and the Mark and Macy show, and then we'll see what the timing is. I can adjust mine as time permits. You know, and I'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, recording live video, your backups. This has been a theme that we've done before. Also, in the shows I've done with Stephen Haywood, the Tech Buzz, we've covered it, you know, on our Friday evening shows. And even on his um, Broadcast Now show, we've covered it as well. Very important topic, especially with Blab having issues, you know, scaling issues and everything. You need that backup. So that's what I'm going to do. Mark, I'm going to turn it over to you to kind of cover your beginning journey with the show and uh, and some of the things, some of the pitfalls and challenges you face and how you've overcome. All right, so basically uh, for the past six years, I've had a channel on YouTube, Mark Rogers TV. Uh, many people who now know that I focused in on college football wonder why I call it Mark Rogers TV. Uh, the initial reason was to brand my name. And secondly, I didn't know what I was gonna talk about exclusively. So I just wanted to talk about whatever was on my mind and quickly decided that I needed to niche down to college football. So for the past six years, it's been Mark Rogers CV on YouTube and those videos are shared on a number of other platforms. Uh, last word on sports, SB Nation, uh, SEC Breakdown, Inside the ACC, a, a number of platforms out there that share my video content. So it's always been my thought, and I've shared this with Marty for a number of years, that uh, I would like to do a show that's a live show with a co-host. And I've tried several incarnations of this type of show, Mark Rogers TV Live, and I've had never a set co-host. I've brought on contributors and to various degrees and had a ton of fun doing a live show for one hour. And the rest of my my videos and my shows throughout the week. I have four other shows that I do on a consistent, regularly scheduled basis are live, but I wanted to do something that was a little bit more personality driven and not necessarily as content driven. So I knew that to uh, market myself and market our show to a larger audience, it would be an interesting dynamic to bring on a female co-host uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, about 95% of my audience, according to YouTube, is male. Therefore, you bring on a female and you bring on a different conversation, a different dynamic for a number of 
obvious reasons. And then also on top of that, uh, sure, there's the attraction. There's also, though, I needed to find the right person because they couldn't just be, uh, you know, a showpiece. Uh, they needed to be somebody that was very knowledgeable, somebody who loves sports, somebody who has a personality and can express themselves, and somebody that can hang with me in regards to my sports knowledge. So, therefore, I went searching on social media for somebody who could fit the bill. And I just basically asked people across the board to give me some recommendations. So, within just a couple hours, I received four recommendations and didn't know any of these people. And I um, contacted several of them. And one person in particular, Macy Golder, uh, was very highly recommended by somebody that I trust in the business and somebody that I'm good friends with at ESPN who does broadcasting there at ESPN. And uh, he, he let me know that this would be the person that uh, with, with some coaching and with some help and um, with some teamwork involved uh, that they felt that I would be the right person to bring them along and make it uh, a really viable show. So I, I went with that and I thought, okay, well, we need to try out this, this format. We need to try out, before we try out the format, we need to try this person out and we need to just cut some video segments. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a bit of a cold over the weekend. So we tried out uh, some video segments. Uh, what was interesting was, uh, and we can joke about this now, Macy and I, that uh, I, I don't think the video segments went that well. Uh, they, they really didn't. Uh, I don't think that uh, the subjects uh, really play to her strengths. And uh, obviously, the first time you get on, the first several times that you attempt recording with somebody uh, and there's not a set pattern, meaning you're not talking about a specific subject and something that they're expert in, uh, then it can be difficult. There are growing pains. There's no question about that. So all the time I have bloggers and broadcasters on who I have not spoken with in the past, but because they're so entrenched in their subject matter and I understand their subject matter, we're talking college football, those conversations usually go pretty smoothly and pretty professionally because again, they're locked in on their subject matter and I understand the subject matter and, and I know how to conduct an interview and facilitate uh, the conversation. In this case, we are opening, opening it up to a personality-driven show, so that takes time to pull together. So we cut a couple segments. I didn't think that they went uh, rather well. We talked about uh, Temple football uh, and a controversial uh, incident on the sideline during the Notre Dame game. And we also talked about, uh, let's see, a college football uh, weekend and previewed some games, and it just didn't go that well. Regardless, my decision was, okay, what's my risk reward in starting a show with this person who has shown me very little to date? Well, my risk is very low. Uh, there's no money involved. There's no contractual agreement. Uh, this person comes highly recommended. I understood that there would be a learning curve. I understood that regardless of the professionalism or the experience of myself or the other person, that there were going to be growing pains because of the type of show that we're trying to do that is very personality driven. So I knew that the reward would be exceedingly high and again, low risk based on, hey, if it bombs and we do it for three weeks and that's it, nobody's going to miss it, nobody's going to find it, it will be just another trial and error situation. Also, there, there's, there's low risk in regards to monetary or build out or time or anything else. Uh, obviously, when you do something like this and you don't know the other person, you you are taking a bit of a risk in, re in regards to responsibility, reliability for the other person. That has uh, worked out extremely well, but at that point I had no idea how invested this other person would be as well. But I said, let's go for it, let's do it. So we started uh, a show on Thursday night. So basically that's where I'm going to leave this story at this point for this week. We're 14 weeks later. And over the next week or two on this show, on BTS Live, I'd like to talk about a number of the steps that we've taken to uh, take it from just hitting record and talking to a viable uh, content to the steps that we've taken in social media and branding and, and launching a website and all of those things 
that uh, are the periphery to the show, but very much needed to build a brand and to make people aware of who you are and where you are and uh, just uh, a number of things. So I'm, I can't take you from start to finish because there is no finish to this. We are closer to the start than we are to the finish, hopefully. Again, uh, Knight Rider, thanks so much for telling us uh, it's a great show. He is a, uh, he's a strong supporter. We appreciate him jumping on board every Thursday night here on Blab. But uh, that's where we stand uh, right now. And, and we just feel that uh, the shows are getting better and better because of the natural camaraderie and teamwork, uh, but also because we've taken some calculated steps in building our brand and in building uh, the camaraderie on the show and uh, being very honest and transparent and open to each other in our preparation for the show and recapping of the shows to understand what our strengths and weaknesses are. And I've learned a lot in terms of bringing somebody along and, and trying to formulate something that's going to aid them and put them in the best possible position to succeed. So it's a learning process for me. And, you know, Marty just uh, mentioned a, a couple of weeks ago and, and the light went off here that uh, at the same time that we're building out this show, Behind the Scenes Live, which obviously talks about the production aspect, but also the on-camera aspect, that I have a case study in progress that I can liken to this, and, and it's going to make for a number of uh, interesting uh, comparisons and analogies as we go along. I, I, I couldn't agree more, Mark. I mean, uh... I think just and you're just get just at the tip of the iceberg here as far as your experience and you're it's funny you're coming into this with television experience already so you've been a professional anchor you've been in a you know professional level studio and responsible for doing in I think in some of your gigs you know you were sports director for um, some affiliates, right? And you're responsible for that, you know, whatever the time you have for that report every night, you're responsible for the content and those few minutes that you have to cover the, you know, the, the scores and the sports that are most of interest to the viewer, you know? And so you know the planning and you know the work that goes into, you know, putting on a show and all the stuff that happens behind the scenes, you know, and probably, I would think that most of the work happens before you even hit air and then people see the actual finished product which is really at the tail end of the process you know one of the numbers I've thrown out there before is 90 10 you know 90 percent of the work happens before you even hit air before we even do this show and then 10 percent is what the public actually sees is that kind of line up with what your experience has been and when you bring up being a sports director uh, which I was at a couple different stations. Uh, yeah, it's the plan for that particular day, but it's the plan for the department for long term. And I'm finding that out uh, in, in what we're doing right now is that uh, there's work that you can put forward in any particular day that speaks to that day and is going to pay off that day. And you're going to see the results of it that day. But you also need to save time and project long term and, and do some work uh, during the week that's going to pay off long term, that's going to uh, you know, build a base that's, that's going to, again, pay off down, down the, the road. So the, the finding that balance of meeting the immediate content needs and what you would like to produce and deliver each and every day to your fan base, but also projecting to the future and building a strong core that's gonna last and doing some things that, hey, this, this two hours that I put in today is not going to be evident to anyone or manifested in any tangible way now, but it's going to help us down the road because we're, we're building a base and building a foundation. Uh, I, could, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I would think when you were at your stations, uh, you, just had a, you, ha you didn't have to handle any, any of the um, technical areas. You know, you were more about the content, more about your on-air presence, making sure you're prepared to go on air, you know, make sure you dress, make sure your appearance is good, make sure you're ready to go, you know, voice and everything's working. And then there's a whole nother part of it that's a technical part. And I think that's the big difference that you're seeing doing these shows. When you were, quote, in a professional studio, you had a whole team of people that you work with. 
you know, and everyone had a one job to do. And, and as a team, you brought the whole team together and you produced a show. You're kind of a one man band. I think a, me, you, you know, I'm, I'm switching the show. I'm making sure all the technical stuff is set up. You're doing the same thing with Mark and Macy. We come together, you know, we're both, you know, not only, you know, concerned about the content, but we're also managing the technicals, make sure everything goes out on multiple streams and the complicated setup over here you know Stephen Haywood I think he's in in the room very similar you know he does shows he's the host and producer and the technical director all these jobs which normally in a professional level network level setting everyone has a different job to do you know so I think that has that been not necessarily learning learning um point but maybe uh an interesting experience, I guess, from what you're used to when you're actually on there professionally versus doing your own show. So the one thing I didn't anticipate was the the time consumption. So Marty, uh, early in the process, would comment to me how quickly I could produce content, and, and that's that's very true. Uh, that's that's one fortunate aspect of my skill set is that I can produce content very quickly. So I've produced seven, eight videos in one day, just flipping open the laptop and talking uh, and, and not having to do editing or any level of preparation for that particular topic, uh, just having enough of a foundation of knowledge and so forth. But the post-production involved, even at a very remedial level of YouTube and sending it to different brands, once you uh, maybe review a 15 minute video in which you're not familiar with the name spouted off by the blogger you just interviewed. So you have to go through, you have to uh, account for the tags, you have to write the description, you have to put in the fonts, uh, the subscription um, application. Uh, you want people to subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel. You need to send it out to LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Vimeo, uh, other um, other platforms, uh, like I say, I, I'm in contact with uh, Inside the ACC, SB Nation, Last Word on Sports, and number other platforms, and I have to send that out to those platforms. And what I didn't anticipate was the post-production work involved, uh, even again at a base, very base level, uh, that that time consumption was going to be more than I anticipated. And then also, yeah, from the uh, technical standpoint uh, unfortunately here momentarily I've taken a step back with with camera lighting microphones that's going to get uh, remedied here very shortly uh, as soon as some shipments come in we should be in good shape but uh, we've had to take a step back just here in the last uh, few weeks uh, to take steps forward so that's going to be very evident here soon yeah, I agree. I agree. That's part of the, I mean, this is part of the building challenge. And I think what you said there, uh, is speaks volumes, uh, you know, and, and really talking to the blab audience, which we find that as far as folks that watch us on blab.im, they tend to be more on maybe on the beginner side, more people that are just starting with, with video. And, um, you know, I think that's the thing that people don't think about is, you know, all the prep, and all the everything that goes into it not not certainly not only content but but technically and i think with a lot of these video services that have been popping up and the kind of the convergence of technology data access you know bandwidth that you can actually you know produce and stream live video the quality of the equipment you know you can just grab your phone you know and it has a great camera built in you know the latest iphone has 4k Samsung is is getting ready to uh, release their uh, S7, which has a tremendous camera, can almost take pictures in the dark. So the technology, camera sensors come a long way. So everything converged, and it's presented as something very easy to do, and it is for the most part. But like anything, especially if you want to do it at a high level, you still got to prepare, you still got to rehearse, test, make sure everything's working. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. I think that's been evidence by some of the challenges that Blab has been going through lately um, with their service saying, you know, scaling it up, you know, everybody wants, you know, every feature, you know, and what do they do first? And then the technology, technology that they're using, 
to build Blab and to give us this platform is fairly new and still a very evolving technology, WebRTC. That's what they rely on. It's peer-to-peer -peer video through the browser. And that's a standard that is evolving very, very quickly. Updates are coming. And many of you probably have noticed, I have noticed on my end, that different browsers are updated at different times. And some may break, some may perform differently from day to day even, or week to week. And so especially with this type of technology, it's so, so important to make sure that you're testing, that you're researching, that you're making sure that it works every week. Just because it worked last week, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work the same way this week if you have a weekly show or even daily you know and you know again I'm, I'm uh, really speaking to folks that are doing it on a professional level for business um, you know you really want to be aware of that and I think uh, you know again the good rule to remember is 90 10 rule and so Mark I'm gonna uh, get into a little bit about what I'm gonna talk about and if I can't cover everything we'll, we'll certainly you know, cover more about this in a future week. But with all everything happening with Blab and some of these platforms and some of the challenges that people have had, and especially with records on Blab, you know, and, and I'm not going to get into what the reasons are or whatever, you know, you know, again, it's very challenging technology to work with. And, uh, you know, I know the Blab team's doing the best they can, but you know, with the challenge, with you knowing that maybe the reliability is, you know, it's still very beta and still working out the kinks. What do you do if you're relying on Blab to do your recordings? If that's your only recording, right? Mark, you've had that issue, right? Where you've noticed it, especially on the audio, where <laughs> either the audio comes back where, you know, back when we first got involved with Blab, I don't think the, the usage was up there and it seemed like it was really good. And I think as, as scaling challenges have come along, you've noticed some crackling, maybe even not getting the recording at all. I mean, has that been your experience? Yeah, so in the last couple of weeks, the two things that I've noticed is number one, um, that the system has become apparently overloaded by having uh, all four boxes taken. In, in, the, in the instances that I've had, I actually had a strange situation last week where we had two hosts. I was supposed to be the main host, as I typically am, but I couldn't come on till a little bit later. So I had two other guys start the hosting of the show. I jumped in, I called in, they accepted the call, and I knocked somebody else out. Um, and I've seen that happen a number of times. I've also had issues where I've had fairly lengthy shows and 25, 30 minutes into the show where everything's been fine, we've all frozen, gotten kicked out, and, you know, because of internet issues with particular people, I thought that that might be the main source. But every time we've immediately grouped together, jumped to Google Hangouts, everything's been fine in all these instances. So that's been number one. And number two on the records, as you just mentioned, uh, I've had cracks and popples uh, pretty consistently in the record version of the Blabs. And again, I'm doing... Google Hangouts um, the same days that are not having those issues, so I know that they're that they're connected to Blab. Well, it's interesting that in in the time it took you to <clears throat> to go through that, I look over here and I notice that we are no longer on Blab, so we are on there now. But you know, it's funny. This is exactly what we're talking about here. You know, I didn't do anything over there. I just let it go, and I look over and I notice that. I'm off blab. You know, I mean, this is the this is the kind of the point that we're making here, um, and uh, and this is not to bash blab in any way, uh, it, but it is to illustrate a point that this technology is extremely cutting edge, very evolving, and not me doing anything. I'm looking over here, and oh, I got to resume the recording. Standby. And that's an interesting thing too. I can't see the record. So, Blab is the recording's gonna not, not going to turn out very well. But it really doesn't matter because I have a backup. I'm streaming live in HD. I'm actually recording locally on my TriCaster. So the rear is going to be HD quality. The audio should be should be good. 
and uh, when I post to YouTube and I play them out live on btslive.com, we I play a rolling a selection of the latest episodes on kind of a rotating basis during the week when we're not live, sort of like a like a television station, like a network, you know. So that will be fine. So you know I'm covered, you know. And but what do you do if you're relying on Blab and you get popped out and now I'm not recording? lost all the viewers people are coming back and i want to thank everyone for coming back but what do you do you know luckily i was able to get back in so a couple of things that i want to cover and uh let me switch to to my camera here so a couple couple of things i want to cover here and kind of let you know what i do uh and maybe what you could do as a as a backup solution now many people that that do shows on blab do not have expensive equipment. You might have a webcam, you might have a simple microphone, USB microphone, and a computer, and that's about it. And that's, and that's plenty for Blab to get started. And then you're using Blab platform to record the audio and video. So what happens if, I know Mark's had this issue, I've had this issue, that the recording doesn't go according to plan, you get kicked out, you, know, you don't get the link to download your recording. If you want to edit it, what do you do? Well. You need to have some type of a backup plan to record your, your audio and your video. One way to do it is to stream to an alternate CDN, content delivery network. What is that? That's just a, a fancy name for a video service. So YouTube Live is a CDN. It's <coughs> you're, you're streaming your video to YouTube. They're taking it and they're encoding it to various resolutions and they're streaming it on their platform and you're able to see it. I want to point to a couple of ones. That's a, that's a one that everyone knows, but I want to point to one here that people may not know about, and that's DailyMotion.com. This is, I believe, is a French company. I also stream to DailyMotion as well, and they're very similar to YouTube. They offer live streaming. They will record your live stream. You can schedule streams, shows, and it's a really nice platform. You can embed the video. In fact, the video that's embedded on BTS Live is actually the daily motion video that, that you're watching. So it's a great, great service to, to get started with. Um, you know, I mentioned YouTube as well. They offer live streaming. Uh, in fact, anybody, you, anybody, it's, it's offered to anybody who wants it. You just have to enable it. You have to verify your account and enable it in the settings. Uh, and you don't even have to schedule a show. You can actually stream directly to YouTube whenever you want automatically you know you can they, it's like a stream now functionality so you can actually do that another way to go if you do not want to stream or don't have the technology to stream in fact that's something that we can get into in future weeks and i think stephen haywood and myself will cover that in one of our future friday shows they may be a little complex for most people because you do need additional equipment capture cards and that type of thing so it gets a little complex one other way to, that you can go is do a screen record okay so you basically just want to capture the screen the video and the audio on your computer and a couple different ways you can go there one is on the pc side you can use a program called camtasia i believe it's in the two to three hundred dollar range it's not cheap but what this enables you to do it is, it's from a company called TechSmith that enables you to record your screen and also record your audio, your system audio as well, very easily. And at least if you can do that, you have a copy of your blab, what you're doing. And you can record the whole screen with the comments. So that can, that can be a real nice solution. On the Mac side, there's a program called ScreenFlow, which I use. Uh, from Telestream, the same the people that make Wirecast. It's a great program. I believe in the App Store. It's I want to say ninety nine dollars for the Mac. But I will point out another solution for lucky Mac owners, and this is something that's free. And I'm just gonna quickly. Hopefully, I, hopefully this demo goes goes right. So I'm gonna switch to my screen here. So what I'm showing here is I've opened up an instance of QuickTime Player. Now, if you have a Macintosh, QuickTime comes standard on your computer, QuickTime 10. And as a function of QuickTime, and I'm just gonna close this out so I can show you guys when I open it. So if you go to the menu, of, you're probably not seeing the menu, of course. 
<laughs> well, I'm going to, you'll see it now. So you go to the file menu and you open up a new, you can do either a, that's not showing it. So sorry about that, guys. I have, let me switch to my other shot. Okay, there you go. So in the menu, uh, you can do one of three things. You can do a new movie recording, a new audio recording, or a new screen recording. I'm, for this purpose of this demo, I'm going to do new screen recording. So you click on that. It opens up a di another dialog box here. And it gives you the screen record dialog box. Now, here's the magic sauce here. Now, what this enables you to do is rec basically record your screen and record the audio. So you can either record you can have no microphone or you can record you can it, you've got to hit that little carrot there next to the record button and select your audio device so if you want to record your screen and record your microphone you just have to select the microphone that you're recording and wh what's great about this and if i hit record click full screen so it's recording the screen and then uh, see i got it in full screen here so hopefully it's not gonna meh. see live demos are always tough folks um but there we go so at the end of your recording it'll present you with a dialog box and you can actually save your recording or you can delete it so i'm saying don't save here and the cool thing about that uh being a mac it's free and again it gives you a quick and easy backup of your recording the only caution i'm going to mention here with quicktime is that you know again it's another thing that you're running in the background so you want to experiment and you want to make sure that you have at least a late model Macintosh with a, with a i7 processor preferably and enough RAM to be able to run it along with Blab because all this stuff takes resources. So, you know, again, it's compromised. You want to make sure that you have enough resources, enough RAM to be able to run both. But it's a good down and dirty backup so that at least if something happens to your Blab recording, you have a screen recording with audio that you can go to and then you can bring it in you can edit it and post it out to youtube or or repurpose it in any way so again that gives you some some at least a look at some of the possibilities or some of the other alternatives that you can um use so that you're not relying on just one single source for recording so mark did you get that <laughs> uh i will be watching the replay oh there you go okay and forgive me folks i'm not i can't look at the look at the um comments because for the folks that are just getting in the room now i'm looking over to the side here i'm looking at the blab on the, on the side computer here i had to switch computers last minute because of an audio issue uh i'm gonna re kind of rejigger the the uh studio here and i'm gonna bring this computer off to the front and kind of have a wall of monitors over here so that next week I can use the iMac, the old iMac that I have that was giving me problems with audio as a basically a blab machine and at least I can see the comments that way and I can I can see everybody. So that's the plan for next week. So Mark, uh, and what I'm going to do guys for folks in blab, and I know Mark, you got to run um, to do another show at the top of the hour. So I'm going to let you go. But I'm going to try to do, once I'm once we're done with the formal show here, uh, I'm going to hop back on Blab, and I'll be happy to answer qu any questions. I know there was a question about how I'm doing the multiple camera, and I'll get into that in the post show. But Mark, uh, I know we're going to cover a lot of this going forward. Um, this question about backup, um, pre-production planning, especially the, the experiences that you had with building Mark and Macy, you just touched the tip of the iceberg as far as you know the chemistry part of it i think is such so so important you know just to kind of recap what you were going through uh as far as your experience goes that if you don't have chemistry then you might as well not even do a show or yeah, you're building it takes time show that, that we're embarking on it's everything and sure i wanted somebody who was going to be sports knowledgeable that could hang with me and, and we do a pretty hardcore sports show uh, I would say about 75% of the discussion is pretty hardcore sports, but we have a lot of fun with it, and there has to be a back and forth, and we start to talk about each other's lives and, and uh, what's going on there, so there has to be camaraderie. And the other portion of this that I have to give props to Macy for 
is just consider reaching out on the internet to friends and professionals that you know in the business and just trying to find somebody. I have been extremely fortunate to find somebody who's responsible and reliable and um, does what they say they're going to do. So, so if, if you're looking for a partner to do a show, uh, with, with all that's required outside of the just hit record and talk, uh, you need somebody who's reliable, and, and that's not always an easy thing. You want somebody who's gonna gonna be there when you need them. Hey, I echo what you're saying, Mark. I mean, the commitment, um, and that's another good point you bring up: commitment. Because with podcasting, with creating content, and as you know, you've been doing your own sports content for, a, you know, five or six years now. You've been doing it for a long time. You do it because you love it. You know, and that's one of the things I asked you when, you know, you started from scratch. You had n no YouTube, no, you didn't have any idea what to do other than your ability to be on camera and your sports knowledge. You didn't know how to translate that to creating online video. And the question I asked you early on was, are you committed to it? Do you do it because you love it? Because you're going to be doing it for a long time to get any kind of traction. You know, and that's what I think people, when they get into this stuff, they think of, they, they're going to get instant results. And that's just simply not true. Uh, you know, it's, that's why it's so important to do something. If you're going to create content, create content around an idea that, one, you know something about, and two, that you really love talking about because you're going to be doing it for a long time if you expect to get traction. Very, very important. You know, um, it just takes a long time. A lot of people, I think, quit. I mean, it takes, um, you know, it, it, it takes several months to get any kind of traction at all. And again, depending on, on how niche you're, your your topic is and you know and as, again as long as you're not copying people there's a lot that goes into it Me, you know having chemistry with with, with the audience uh, I think nowadays I think social media has helped that a lot because you have things like Facebook groups where you can actually interact when you're not live and really get to know people and that's where the really the magic happens I think with you know sh people that are producing their own content versus a network level show you know, we're network level for a long time. It was one to many. Here, you have you certainly have one to many. Like we produce our show like a broadcast television show, but you have the added element of interaction with your audience through Blab or through a chat room, and it's interactive. And then off channel, when you're not live, you have the interaction through a Facebook group or a forum. And you really get to know each other, you know, as far as what you're going to talk about, especially a technical subject or a niche subject like this, that not everyone's going to be interested in it, but the people who are, are really interested, you know, and it's important to have that rapport with your audience. I think the chemistry part of it is very, very important. Chemistry, not only with each other, but with the audience, you know, they get to know you on a personal level. Um, which is very, very important. Even, you even see that on, on network television, right? I mean, that either you know i mean i'll throw out i'll go way back here with espn but oberman and patrick keith oberman and dan patrick when i when i first started with espn i think that was the pinnacle as far as the sports center team you know i mean they had this chemistry going that was it's hard to reproduce you know and maybe the la you know i'm not sure the, the la team that they seem to have a pretty good chemistry but I, you know what do you think mark i mean not only with each other but also with the audience I think you nailed it in regards to what most people consider to be the heyday of Sports Center with Oberman and Patrick. Uh, for anybody who's a sports fan out there that remembers, oh, late 80s to mid to late 90s, for close to a 10 year span, those guys hosted the 11 o'clock Eastern Time Sports Center and they just got each other. There was just a, you can't have two people hosting a show that are too similar, but they have to be complementary. And those guys, the humor, the the high brow and high level high intellect for a sports show level of humor and sarcasm just worked and, and that's you you can try to put two people together and you you can give it a pretty good estimation as to whether these two people based on again their ability their 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 personalities their their um, their sense of humor whether they're going to work well together but until you see it actually flow and, and work well together then it's it's not going to happen and, and most people that work well i think on camera together do so because they have some level of a relationship off camera 
that works. Not all the time. I, I'm going to I'm going to go way way back into the chronicles of history with uh, with Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Those guys didn't speak for like 12 years off stage, but you know they're just so brilliant on stage that uh, they got together on stage and made magic happen. Now that's lightning in a bottle, and that just never happens. But otherwise, there there needs to be some level of uh, of relationship, I would think, uh, off camera to to make it work on camera as well. If you have any kind of a shot of making it work on camera. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, and and sometimes that takes a little time, a little patience, you know. And I think in today's world, sometimes uh, we don't give that time enough to develop. You know, I mean, uh, but yeah, I mean, the chemistry has to be there. So if you guys are looking to do shows, say on blab.im and, and you're looking at a co-host, which I would highly recommend, it makes the whole process a heck of a lot easier, you know, especially since that particular platform is so, so engaging and so interactive. Um, and so you can watch the comments and interact with folks. Um, but again, the chemistry factor has to be there where, you know, and Mark, you know, we, you know, uh, you're, you're professional on camera, you know, I've learned from watching you, I've been around it, you know, at ESPN and pacing and playing off each other and knowing, you know, one person starts and the other person stops and that type of thing going back and forth. I think that's a big challenge for a lot of people on Blab where they're just starting and they have no experience working with another person and that whole playing off each other and knowing who talks, who listens, where they go and that type of thing and you know and this is a subject that we'll get into more as we go and i know you have a you know i'll, I'll tease it as far as the prep part and that'll kind of help develop the chemistry i know kind of what you're going to be getting into next uh and we'll leave it there at that but there's a lot of prep that goes behind the scenes to help the chemistry along you know it starts with an r you know and you know what i'm talking about to what you yes. what you implemented with an um, r and uh yeah, there, there's a number of different ways that you can go with the, this, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll tease it this way, that uh, I think that uh, there's an element of it that, you know, in previous weeks on this show, for the past 15 weeks, we've generally, from the talent standpoint, uh, approached it talking about your delivery to your fans, your, your audience. And that's tough enough to deliver uh, content in a reasonable way, in a way which people get excited, get engaged or interested and, and watch you and aren't going to click you off. That's, that's difficult enough. Now for some people, having a co-host is easier if they're able to develop that rapport and have a conversation and it takes the anxiousness out of it because they can rely on the other person. They don't feel like they've got to talk for 15 or 20 consecutive minutes. but there is definitely a skill in having that back and forth that doesn't exist and when you're just presenting a subject by yourself and having a feel for how long that person's going to talk, what they're talking about, being able to, and multitask, I, I think we both believe is, is, a, is a myth, but in terms of being able to kind of harness two streams of thought at the same time that I need to prepare what I'm going to say, but to make a show like that truly work, you have to listen to the other person. It, there's nothing more awkward. There's few things more awkward than when you're watching a show, and it's very obvious that those two people aren't listening to each other. They have prepared statements. They're preparing them in their head. They're not listening to the other person because they just talked over what the other person just talked about or just said something that made it very obvious that they weren't listening to their co-host. And that that kind of blows the cover right there. Yeah, and especially on the network level, sometimes the business, you know, um, kind of leads everything, and they put people together, and they're not sure how the chemistry is going to go, and it can get kind of awkward. At least when you're doing it for yourself, or you're just getting into it either for fun, or you're just starting, even trying to do something on a professional level on like a platform like Blab. You know, again, you can kind of experiment, and you have the um, the luxury of being able to make quick moves if something's not, and you can try different things. I mean, you take this show. I mean, we're in week 16, and we've gone on this journey, this basically this beta journey, trying to piece things together from a technical standpoint, and even from a content standpoint, because we weren't sure how it was going to be accepted, and, and I'm trying to piece this together on how to present the best possible quality and 
what's going to work and all that. And we have the luxury of changing it up if we need to week to week to be able to get this thing right and dialed in the way we expect it to be. You know, at the network level, they might not have that luxury where they have budgets and, you know, crazy setups where they're kind of married to their plans for a little bit. And it's a lot slower. It's a much bigger boat to turn around versus what you have here. And for folks that are wanting to do their shows on Blab, I mean, that's the luxury that you have is like you can change things. You can try things. You can even ask the audience, hey, how'd that work for you? What do you think? And, you know, and I tell you, you know, I can tell you in our community, I mean, you guys are fantastic with that in the Facebook group, in the comments. And I'm going to have the comment situation figured out for next week where I can actually watch the blab comments because I'm missing them right here. But you guys have been fantastic with that, you know, and that's helped us tremendously. And hopefully we've helped you guys and we, we want to continue to do that. But that's huge for us. So again, I, I think I'm gonna wrap it right here, Mark. I'm gonna stick around for a post show on Blab, uh, but I'm gonna end the formal show here. I just wanna remind everybody, uh, if you haven't already, uh, we do have a Facebook group um, on, uh, just search behind the scenes live. Everyone is welcome to join. Uh, we have 101 members. We just crossed 100 members this week. Uh, great conversation there. Barb Tomlin, give all credit to her as far as starting the group. And she's a tremendous force uh, and, and been a tremendous help to us. Uh, there's several people that are incredibly active in the group and it's great, I love it. It's a great conversation and we post all kinds of stuff in there and have these these uh, conversations and, and it's great, you know? So invite everyone, everyone's welcome to join. Um, that's Facebook and search Behind the Scenes Live. Mark, it's been another quick hour. <laughs> no way. Uh, we're gonna wrap this this puppy up here. Um, so everyone, uh, thanks for joining us uh, this week for another edition of Behind the Scenes Live. We're here every Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, talking video production from both in front and behind the camera. Thanks everyone, we will see you again next week.